Hello, my name is Chris Roman. And my name is Alex Wong. And today, we will be talking about air gap techniques and scatter control. In chiropractic work, x-rays are used in situations which require a closer look at a patient's anatomy to diagnose properly. This procedure is quite helpful along the road to maintaining a patient's wellness. Images quality is vital for proper diagnosis. Controlling scatter radiation is the goal. Today, we will be discussing how to control scatter with the use of air gap technique. Scatter radiation is always undesirable, not contributing to, toward a proper image for patient benefit. As Dr. River Mello said, this makes the image less visible by reducing contrast. Examples of scatter radiation upon x-ray of a cervical spine result in scatter and cloudiness. 80% scatter results in cloudy, not clear images. On the other hand, 20% scatter results in a clear cervical vertebrae visibility image. Now it's important to talk about three main factors which contribute to poor image quality, aka scatter. One, energy which is measured in KVP, patient thickness, and x-ray field size. Now you might ask, why is this important? As energy increases, so does scatter radiation, resulting in poor image quality. The higher the KVP results in the higher the scatter. Inversely, the lower the KVP, the lower the scatter, and patient absorption. In terms of patient absorption, we have to be wary of how much the patient is receiving. Now, moving on to point number two. Relating to patient thickness, transmittance is a term to keep in mind. If KVP is too low, the x-ray can't penetrate the patient or the subject. The thicker the patient or region you're trying to observe, the potential for more scatter will occur. Increasing the KVP will allow the x-ray to penetrate the tissue more easily, but once again you're always keeping in mind the patient dose. And our third point, x-ray field size, which is under the doctor's control. As the field size increases, scatter radiation also increases. The more focused the field size, the more advantageous the x-ray, which will be in producing good quality images. As you can see, a balance of all three is important, resulting in a productive, effective image. In terms of scatter control, cones and cylinders are a great example of devices to help reach that end goal of a clear image. Cones and cylinders can be used to focus on a specific region, for example teeth, while reducing scatter for the patient. Now we are going to tie in how controlling scatter radiation can be done by using the air gap technique. The practitioner uses a chest radiographic stream between the film and this patient for the purpose of absorbing scatter radiation. OID, also known as object to image receptor distance, is an important concept because the change of distance from the patient to the focal spine. This increases radiation time for the patient and increases the focus of a particular region. For example, the metacarpals. There are both advantages and disadvantages of using the air gap technique. Main advantage is reducing scatter 
and main disadvantage is image magnification. If a patient comes into your office with a chief complaint of a neck pain, upon x-ray procedure of the patient's cervical spine, you observe slight kyphosis of C3. In this case, the air gap technique serves as an efficient way to observe a global view of the cervical spine. That was an advantageous example of the air gap technique. A case in which you wouldn't use this technique is if a patient comes into your office with a chief complaint of chest pain. Upon x-ray procedure of the patient's chest, you observe a potential issue with the xiphoid process, but you cannot focus in more to get a closer look due to poor image quality. In our presentation, we went over details about how to control scatter radiation and what technique should be used. To review and reinforce concepts, we will quickly go over a few major points. Remember that there are three main factors that can potentially produce poor image quality. The first one is KVP energy. The second one is patient's thickness. And the third one is x-ray field size. If you appropriately measure out these three factors, then you will be able to produce a high quality x-ray image where you, as a practitioner, can, uh, can properly diagnose. A technique that can control scatter radiation is the air gap technique. A chest radiographic x-ray is used to absorb scatter radiation. Remember that a main advantage of this is reducing scatter. However, a main disadvantage is image magnification. If you remember these important points from our presentation, you will be able to produce a high quality x-ray image. Thanks for watching.